Hello friends, welcome to our Family Ministry website. I am so excited that you have tuned in for our Family Ministry service this week. My name is Miss Evie and I am the Midweek Ministry Director here at New Life North. Well, before we dive into the Big God story and a time of worship, I would like us to start our time with a connect activity. So for the next two minutes, I would like you and your family to think through what in your life that has a beginning and an end. There's a lot of things in our lives that have beginnings and ends. So think through what are some of the things that may have a start and an end. Well, let me help you start this off. I am thinking about a vacation. Now that has a beginning and an end, right? And when you are discussing this with your family, ask each other, would you rather be at the beginning of this thing or at the end of this thing? All right, so take two minutes and I'll meet you right back here. Hi, welcome back. So, how was it? What did you and your family come up with? Did you have fun talking through different things in your life that has a beginning and an end? I bet you your things were pretty creative, right? Well, let me share with you a few of mine. I, before the break, I said a vacation has a beginning and an end. I actually like to be at the beginning of a vacation. Why? Well, because it's so much fun to dream about what's going to come. It's exciting to plan for the trip. It's exciting to think through what are the different things that are going to happen. Here's another one that has a beginning and end I was thinking. A movie. Did you think about the same thing too? Well, for a movie, I would rather be at the end of a movie. Why? Well, I like to know the end of the story. I want to know what happens to everything, to the characters, to the story. You know, my mom likes to know the end of every movie before she even starts watching it. She wants to know if there's a happy ending. What about you? Do you like to know the end of the story before it begins? I'm going to hold up this and right here. What is this? You're right. It's the letter A. Is there any letter that comes before A? You're right. No, there is not. This is the start of the English alphabet. A. How about this one? You're right. Is it Z? Is there any letter that comes after Z? You're right again. No, you're so smart. This is the end of our English alphabet. 
A is the start, the beginning, and Z is the end. This is something that reminds me of what the scripture tells us about who God is, that He is the beginning and the end. Okay, you ready? Let's turn to Revelations 1 verse 8. It says here, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. He who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. See, just like the letter A and Z, God is saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is the beginning letter of the Greek alphabet and Omega is the end letter of the Greek alphabet. And God is saying, just like that, there is no other God before me. I've always been there and I will always be here and I will always be there at the end. That is so exciting that the God of the universe have, has always been there for us and will always be there because he has a plan for each and every one of us because he loves us so much. I grew up in a different country. I'm going to show you a world map right here. See this little country right here? It's called Malaysia. That's where I was born and raised. And God has been with me from the very beginning. And I was born right here in Malaysia. Even to the time right now, I came to America about 28 years ago. And I still remember the time when I made that decision to come to the United States, which is right here. See, pretty far away, huh? Cross the continents and come to America to finish my degree at the university to study. And I remember being nervous about it because I'm coming to a new place, away from something familiar, away from my family. But God has been so faithful. He was with me from the very beginning of my time in America, and He has never, ever left me. Every single milestone, every single experience that I've had in America, God has been with me. And I know because the Bible tells me that God will be with me till the very end. How about you? Have you seen God being faithful to you in your life, in your family's life? How has He been real in your life? See, this God who has been with us from the very beginning promises us that He will be with us to the very end. And today, Miss Kendra is going to share with you something exciting. Remember I said in the beginning that my mom likes to know the end of a story of a movie before she starts watching it and I kind of like to know the end of a story too? Well, I'm so excited that the Bible starts and ends with God. And we know the end of the story, and the story is so good. And Miss Kendra is going to continue to share with you the end of this big God story. And I cannot wait for you to hear it. All right, before we do that, I want to encourage and invite each and every one of you to stand on up, and we are going to worship our big God. Hey, my families, we are so excited to see you again. Everyone stand up and join us as we thank and praise the Lord.
Discipleship Coordinator at New Life North, and I'm so excited that you're here with me today to dive into scripture. Over the last year, we've been traveling through the Big God story, discovering who our Big God is and how we can follow Him. And today, we've made it to the last book in the Bible. It's called Revelation. Now, do you guys know what Revelation means? Well, if you don't, a revelation is like a secret that's being told. And so today, I'm going to let you in on a really cool secret. It's the most exciting news ever. But before I do, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your word so that we can know you and know how to follow you. We thank you for being with us, for being to us, for loving us, and for making a way for us to be with you forever. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come, would you speak this today, and would you make yourself known? It's in your name we pray. And everyone
everybody said amen. Okay, well I know I said I was gonna keep the secret for a little bit later, but I just can't keep it inside because it's such good news. So I'm gonna share it with you and then we're gonna rewind a little bit. So my secret is this. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for us, his people. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that later. But first, let's grab our remotes, hit the rewind button, and go a little bit backwards in time. At the very beginning of our Big God story, back in Genesis, we hear that our Big God, He created the heavens and the earth. He created all things, and He created His good world to be good. And He created two people. We all know who these people are, right? So shout out their names for me. Adam, that's right, and Eve, the first two people. And they lived in this beautiful garden that God created. And they took care of his good world. And they only had one rule they had to follow. And that was that they couldn't eat the tree, or the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Seems easy enough, right? Well, Adam and Eve, they couldn't follow that one rule. And because of that, they had to leave the good garden God had created for them. And their relationship, their perfect and whole relationship with God was broken and sin entered the world. But God made a promise to his people then and there that he would send a redeemer to repair that broken relationship one day. So as we journey through the big God story, we see people waiting and waiting for this redeemer to come. We've met so many people. We've met Moses. We've met Abraham, he was before Moses, but we met Abraham and Moses. We met people like Joshua and Caleb and David, all kinds of people who were just waiting for this promised redeemer. They waited hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years even. And one day we hear that the redeemer was born. Who knows what the redeemer's name is? right. The Redeemer's name is Jesus. Jesus was born, but he wasn't born in a grand palace or in front of all kinds of people. He was born in a really tiny town called Bethlehem, and he was put in a manger where animals were, and, and people didn't know that this was happening. The Bible tells us um, that Jesus, our Redeemer, that there was nothing about him that caught other people's attention. He wasn't amazing, um, like looking, he wasn't the who you'd think would be king or any of this stuff, any of those things. In fact, the Bible says that he was despised and rejected. And the people that he came to save, they didn't think anything of him. They didn't think that he was their redeemer. And in fact, he was. And we know that and we celebrate that Jesus died and he rose again, defeating death so that one day we can be with our big God forever. Friends, right now we are living in the in-between, in between when Jesus ascended to be with his Father in heaven, preparing a place for us, and when he comes back to bring his kingdom here. And he didn't leave us by ourselves though. He gave us a gift. He gave us his Holy Spirit to be with us until he returns. The day he returns is going to be amazing. And I've always had this question and I wonder if you have this question too. My question is, what do you think Jesus will look like when he comes back, when he returns? So think about it in your head. What do you think he might look like? Wonder. Well, scripture tells us that Jesus, when he returns, he's going to come back. He's gonna be riding on a white horse. He's gonna have crowns on his head, and he's gonna be leading heaven's armies wearing a white robe. He looks so powerful. And it's so funny because sometimes I forget that he's the most powerful person. He's the powerful, glorious God who created the whole universe. But he's also our God who came and was born as a humble baby. And so you have to remember that he is the glorious God who created the whole world. In Revelation, the same chapter, it tells us that 
Jesus also has other names other than Jesus. I'm gonna share a couple with them, a couple of them with you today. Let me grab that for you. He's called faithful and true. Because he's faithful and true. He's called the word of God. He was the word at the beginning. He was there at creation. He's here with us now, the word of God. He's called the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's above all others. He's called the beginning and the end. He was there at the beginning. And he's gonna be with us at the end for all eternity. Now, like I said before, Jesus is preparing a beautiful place for us to live with him forever. Scripture tells us that this place is going to be a giant city. It says it's going to be a huge city made of pure gold and precious gems. Now, gems are super pretty. The Bible tells us that it's going to be things that are made of topaz. Look how shiny that is. And amethyst, it's this pretty purple. I love that. And all kinds of other precious gems. So I wonder if you can see your favorite color. I bet the city will have all these beautiful colors in it when we get to be there. And so the Bible also tells us that God's throne is gonna be in the center of this beautiful city and that there's gonna be a river flowing out of it. Now, another really amazing thing about this city that God is preparing for us is that we're not gonna need light bulbs. We're not gonna need fires so that we can see so that it'll be light because God's glory is going to be what lights up this new city that we get to spend forever with him in. So if you can imagine, you're not gonna need any of those things. Lamps to read your books at night, flashlights to see when you're camping, any of those things because God's glorious light is gonna light up this new kingdom when it comes. Boys and girls, friends, families, God is the beginning and the end. He's preparing this beautiful place for us. And as his children, as people who have said yes to him being the Lord of our lives, we are going to get to spend forever in this wonderful, beautiful place that God is preparing for us. So let's thank him. Let's remember that we are his children and let's praise him for all that he has done for us. So before we go today, I want you guys to open up your hands like this. And the best you can, look through the TV screen or computer screen, however you are watching this, and I wanna bless you. So families, may you know that the God of the universe, who was there at the beginning, who will be there at the end, may you know that that God, he loves you so much. May you know that he knows your name. He has a purpose for you. He's called you to be a part of his family and to be a part of his kingdom. And may you trust that one day you will get to be with him forever in the place where he'll wipe every tear away, where there'll be no more mourning and where his glorious light will shine so brightly and where we get to worship him forever. Be blessed and we will see you next time.